Hello, folks. In case you haven't gotten the memo, Oko, banned. Dreadhorn Arcanist, banned. Astrolabe, we got that one too. That was a bonus one. I wasn't expecting that one. I'm happy it's gone. And so now, obviously, with those powerful cards out of the format, it is absolutely time to play Pox. <laughs> All right, Phil Gallagher of Thraben U here for another Disco Pox stream. Also because of this uh, this very hot looking disco ball right here. So today we are playing Jason W's donation deck list. Um, it is a black white Yorian Pox build featuring two different Kaya's: Kaya Orzov Usurper, as well as Kaya Ghost Assassin. So uh, we're basically Kaya tribal. Uh, we have a, we have a lot of planeswalkers. Um, notably, the donation was made while these cards were legal. Or sorry, while the uh, aforementioned bound cards were legal. So I changed a couple of things for how I expected the meta game was going to change. The world hates Paul. Thank you very much for your support. And yes, absolutely, DNT is a big winner from the bands. Um, but we'll probably talk about that at detail in between rounds or while we're waiting for our opponents to make decisions. So um, this is not your mama's, like, traditional pox deck list, right? So this is an 80-card Yorian monstrosity pox build. Now, Yorian kind of makes sense for pox, right? It is a deck that traditionally plays a lot of land, a lot of hate, and the deck frequently doesn't have a way to actually close out the game. And so having Yorion as a floating 4-5, even if it doesn't really blink any of your cards relevantly, is good enough in a deck like this, potentially. We have a lot of discard, a lot of re redundant removal, and a decent amount of Planeswalkers. The original deck list that the donor submitted had a few more discard spells at 2 mana, but I didn't really like those, so I made some slight changes. I think I put in one more Him to Turok and two Toxic Deluge main that weren't there before. I think Toxic Deluge's stock, as well as the stock of things like Plague Engineer, goes up quite a bit. We're almost a mono-white deck. We're playing Swords to Plowshares because, like, the card's good. It just flexibly answers a lot of stuff. And to revoke existence in the sideboard. Um, otherwise, like, Yorian excluded, we're pretty close to mono-white. Like, there's some white pips in these Planeswalkers, but these are, these are mono-black cards at, at heart in many ways. Um, let's go ahead and jump into things and just get right to it tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for this. It's probably going to be a lot of fun. We'll, we'll probably do some very silly plays with our, um, 33 land deck. For those of you who are watching on this on YouTube, if you're enjoying the post band format, you know, throw me a like, throw me a comment, let me know what you're brewing with. And if you're really enjoying the format, consider donating to the channel and getting some sweet new brews into the legacy crew. Brew? Q. All right. Good luck. You too. Um, our opening hand has lands and spells. I will keep. We're pretty good against a creature-based deck with this hand and bad against like a spell combo deck. We have a turn two Planeswalker. That's totally good with me. My opponent has taken a first mulligan here. Also, let me just say, I am enjoying magic so much right now. Ooh, and I'm on the play. That means I can just lead on Marsh Flats Pass. I think. I've been playing a ton of Vintage in the past week, and I played some post-ban Vintage with Luris as well. And let me tell you, Luris is pretty fun. Um, this wasteland feels like a trap. I know I have 33 lands, but I think playing a Planeswalker this turn into playing a Planeswalker next turn is better a lot of the time than just jamming this wasteland blind. If this Mox Diamond resolves, I'm going to pitch Urborg. And if it doesn't, I'm going to pitch Wasteland. Or I'm going to... Never mind. 
words. We're now going to make sure we don't get stifled. And because I have Mox Diamond, I can just fetch a basic Swamp here. I'm going to lead on Liliana of the Veil. The reason being is that if we're playing against a spell-based combo deck, I want Liliana of the Veil in play earlier. And if we're playing against a Delver deck, Either Liliana will probably be pretty good against a Grixis Delver deck. We would expect things like Young Pyromancer to potentially come down next turn, or a Delver of Secrets, and this Liliana kills both of those. Meddling Mage. Okay, so we're likely playing against something like Esper Vial. Hey, there's a Vial. Uh, also, like, we totally would have gotten there if we wastelanded. That's a shame. Alright, so now we'll go ahead and take this opportunity to wasteland. And then afterwards we don't need to be playing around a daze. And we will just start ticking this up towards ultimate. The nice thing is that our opponent is potentially going to put a uh, meddling mage in play off file a little bit from now, and we have a source to plowshares, which is not going to be a card that they name, and even if they did, we have eliminate. Did activate that right, yeah. Fatal Push is a good name. I'm gonna show them Swords the Plowshares right now, I think. I don't want to let them untap with that vial. Yeah, I think my opponent's name is very good there. So notably, in a future turn, I'm going to want to put the Yorian into my hand. But I wanted to hold up Eliminate in this turn cycle and not do that. Yeah, the, the kill everything ultimate Lily is the plan that I am also thinking about doing. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry, I just enjoyed that a little bit. They named Fatal Push for their meddling mage. Skyclave. Skyclave's annoying. That can give me a 3-3, though. Okay, sorry, what's the templating on this? What happens if I remove this now? Okay, so these are separate triggers. So this is still going to get exiled if I do it. Okay. So I'll take the 3-3 three, three here. The question is, like, do I want to use Eliminate or Swords to Plowshares? Oh, we hit a Palace Jailer. That's super good. I think I want to use my more expensive card now, because next turn cycle I can Swords to Plowshares and put Yorian into my hand.
Yeah, I'm only playing a medium amount of DNT these days. So I don't have all of the templating and rulings down quite as well as I used to. This is awkward. Like, the sphere is pretty good. It prevents my opponent from going, like, recruiter into land, followed by two drop or something like that. I think it's just better for me to take this Yorian and put the Yorian into play and try to close out this game than it is to tax my opponent's mana. Oh, yeah, fine, Andy, for sure. Arming Prince. I don't really want to get Flicker Wisp later. That's not the creature that I want to remove. But that's the creature that I'm going to remove while I have the mana to do it and while it's safe for me to do so. Alright, that was one bottom and one top, so there's something there that they like. Mm. That's the card that punishes me for the line that I took. That's super unfortunate. No, opponent's revealed card is just a charming prince. They're not on a Yorian build. Your guard, thank you very much for following. My issue becomes once my opponent has something in play that gives them card advantage, not just card selection, I start to run into problems, I think. Uh, we don't need to exile any of my permanents here. I I think the plan is still just try to aggro my opponent out in three-ish turns before they can just go absolutely buck wild. The Kaya that lets me get rid of one drops would be a great draw. Actually, I have a ton of great draws. Like, any removal spell to get rid of Soul Herder is pretty good. That's a disaster. Yeah, I'm probably going down here. So, historically, Pox does not beat late game sources of card advantage. Like, when you're Jace the Mind Sculptors, your Oko, it's your Soul Herders, when those sorts of things are in play and just doing their thing, like, you run into, into trouble quickly. Alright, Soul Herder doesn't fly, right? No. So Yorian can still attack. But my opponent is going to get to aggro me out very easily here. Also, remember those Toxic Deluges I added to the deck? Just, just throwing that out there as something that might be good. Uh, we are taking 11 here, though. Which means that we can't actually kill Soul Herder with a deluge. 
Awkward. I can kill Soul Herder, though. Like, I have a chance. I will not be blinking any of my stuff. Your guard, I'm glad you're enjoying it. There's a... Uh... There's going to be a direct to YouTube reanimator video tomorrow. Or, well, I guess I should probably post this league tomorrow. So I guess that'll be Friday. I'll put the reanimator one live. Um, it's not exactly stellar. So this gets rid of their Charming Prince. Then their Flicker Whisk comes back, they blink my Yori and out, and they have Lethal. Alright, I'll just concede here. They have just Determinate. They have Deterministic Lethal on board, I shouldn't have shown them the Lily. Alright. These things can get in here. I think I'm on board with Bitter Blossom. I don't think I like Spheres. to dust is pretty eh. I think I like most of the rest of what's going on here. I think as a two of in an 80 card deck, I don't really like Revoke Existence. If I were a 60 card deck, I might consider boarding that in as an out to Aether Vial, but as an 80 card deck, I don't know that that makes a lot of sense, and most of my cards here are just like removal. So I'm good with this. Why revoke over disenchant? I don't know. Maybe exiling is good. Like, exiling specifically hits Clothis, which can't be destroyed, and it doesn't add to the graveyard count for things like Delve. Like, there's there's corner case scenarios. Um This hand is okay. I don't know if I should mulligan this. It has three planeswalkers that all have relevant text. This is the weakest of them. But I think I need to make a turn one or two play versus this deck. Oh no, the mana though. This is a worse hand than the last one, but this is a six card hand. Do I keep? I think I keep it. I pitched the smallpox because losing my own land here is devastating. I mean, I I have played one one legacy league since the ban. I've enjoyed it a lot. Like that sample size of one for what you can, but well, we can be really good at exiling either vial. That's the good news. Um, anyway, but the responses that I'm seeing on Twitter are that people are really enjoying the format right now. Like, there's some fear of fast combo decks, uh, like Doomsday in particular, taking over, but I think people are, at least for right now, more or less good with where things stand. Since I have so many cards that are important to cast, I'm just going to get a basic here. I don't want to get Wastelanded. It's really important that this resolves so that I can get this vial now. Nice. Oh, there will absolutely be a good Uro shell. Like, un unquestionably. That's if you want to be a control player, you should be thinking about Uro right now. Like, but Uro, I don't think is beyond the acceptable power level standards for Legacy.
Okay, quick refresher to myself here. I think I want this Kaya again this turn. Oh shit, no, I wanted Lily. I should not have played that land. Alright, now that I've played this land, I'm going to commit to a worse line of double wastelanding my opponent. I think taking them off of blue. I think immediately removing the Skyclave with Liliana was the correct line, and wastelanding once. But we'll see how this goes. Just fine. Oh, that's actually a great draw. Now I don't have to give them easy black mana. Alright, uh, I can wait one turn to exile the vial to just clear the board and get a token. Um, my reason for taking them off of blue was I'm guessing that they don't have all that many blue sources in their deck. And so taking them off blue might make it harder to actually get one of the snowbally blue cards into play like Skyclave. Not Skyclave, uh, Soul Herder. Oh, Basic Island even. Exiles one target creature. A baleful strix, sure. <clears throat> All right, what's the line? I like Kaya getting rid of Vile and plussing Lily. I think I'm discarding the Blood Chief's Thirst and using Kaya as a long-term source of card advantage. Oh, my opponent discarded a Force of Will even there. I'm going to go ahead and play the Orborg. I believe Daniel Noon's just 5-0'd with slivers, to the surprise of no one. I'm going to hold back my spirit. Oh yeah, fine and Andy, that's that's a great way to put it. Like, right now is, is like the Brewer's Paradise, where whatever decks you enjoy playing, you enjoy tinkering with. Like, bust them out right now while everyone is working with non-optimized lists. Oh, Palace Jailer is a bit of a beating. I'm not good at taking the Monarch back. Meat Hooks is slivers because they have arms that look like they have meat hooks on them. Old, old school legacy deck names. Salmon Dorado, thank you very much for following. Hope you're enjoying the content. Hmm. Can't exile that monarch emblem. Turn's really awkward. I think I'm going to go Lily Plus, and I'll discard this Thoughtseize.
Uh, just got a delta. Then I'll play this Kaya. I can protect loyalty on my Planeswalkers by exiling Palace Jailer kind of awkwardly. Otherwise, I can, like, minus on Kaya and take one of my opponent's cards while drawing a card. I think I'm just gonna, like, get this out of the way. My opponent's already the Monarch, so them becoming a Monarch again is not a big deal. Like... You only have one head. You can only hold one crown. Those are the rules. I don't make them up. Oh, that's weird templating. Okay. So when the ability resolves, I can exile Kaya or that card. And now I have three Planeswalkers on board. Yeah, I have super friends. Um, I could really use a Toxic Deluge. Like, getting an X for one right now is really important. My Lily of the Veil is losing a loyalty here. That'll do. I really want to name human because that has more impact on their deck. Hold on, can I... Wording? Up to one target creature at the beginning of your next upkeep. So I can play Plague Engineer, put it on bird, kill two of these creatures, Blink my Plague Engineer if that's a good thing to do, and then put it on Human, and that cleans up Recruiter later. That's pretty hot. First, let's see if this was resolves. This would be a good force of will from my opponent. Um, I might just leave the Plague Engineer in play temporarily, though, rather than, like, blinking it immediately. So, the way that I probably win this game is with this Kaya ultimate, by the way. My opponent already has four cards in exile. This is a game of magic, all right. Oh, also, sorry, I should adjust some settings here. I didn't realize this was going on. There. Bird. Bird. Bird is the word. All right, so now we'll take this opportunity to plus this Liliana. Ah, we dodged Force of Negation. Nice. All right, so let's get some Baleful Strix out of there. All right, now... I think since this holds off Recruiter, it's fine to not do this. I think I'm gonna do this. Just take one of my opponent's cards, draw a card. Their best cards should be on top of their library from Brainstorm, but they may not be. Um, 
I will go ahead and just fire this off. Not great to be wastelanding the player who is the monarch, but I think in this situation it's fine. Oh, yeah, you're right. I should have only exiled one creature there. Ah, my Orion. Oh, man, this Plague Engineer getting reset to human will be gas later. No, they had a second Charming Prince. Oh, no, I saw the first Charming Prince, a different game. That's really good. Come on, Toxic Deluge. Uh, Bitter Blossom. Uh, that's okay. Is this a Liliana Edict turn? This is probably a Liliana Edict turn. I'm going to try to fish for a card here. Eh. All right. So let's grab this bitter blossom. Now I'll grab meddling mage and brainstorm. Now do I Edict? It just takes away a 1-1 body. I can keep this loyalty higher to make my opponent's attacks harder next turn. I think that's better. I'm going to get a Flyer and kill these Recruiters anyway. Now let's make my opponent's attacks more awkward next turn. Yeah, so Alice Jailer exiles the creature until an opponent controls becomes the monarch. It's not like a lot of the Banisher Priest clones. Also, let me just say, I feel good about the Toxic Deluges that I've added to this deck. I am getting buried by the monarch though. I need to uh I need to take that back. My opponent gets a flyer in the next turn cycle. It is bad news bears for me. So they probably, well, they could just have a creature. Go ahead and just take that guaranteed card. Yeah, it's a land. Do I have a creature in graveyard? I don't have a creature in graveyard. But by taking that card there, we make it so that there's fewer things that can actually stop this fairy rogue from getting in. And if the fairy rogue gets in, I A, become the monarch and get another card, and B, get the plague engineer. Plague engineer going on human means their entire board is not currently threatening. Built. That's obviously very good here.
because now they just get one more turn of drawing a card with the Monarch. If I were the opponent, I would kill Lilian of the Veil here. Lily of the Veil threatens to take the card that they get with the Monarch. Which I think is more important than Kaya or Zav Usurper's ability by quite a bit right now. Alright, I still don't have a creature in Graveyard. Put the old Yorion in my hand. I maybe should have gotten rid of the Vile in this turn cycle. It didn't matter when it was at 1, but it matters at 2. I don't know. I'm still playing towards, like, maybe getting to ultimate this Planeswalker or the other copy of it. And that's how I quickly steal a game. But maybe I should have pivoted to get rid of the Vile. Alright, so everything is going at this. That means that's going down. That's fine. Alright, can you answer my fairy rogue token this turn? Um, two mana flyer? Yeah, Baleful Strix. Shit. Alright, now I need to draw a removal spell for their cantripping creature. Yikes. They gave me a Teferi Time Raveler for Lily. I think Teferi Time Raveler is way better. Uh, I'm not going to attack with the Fairy Rogue this turn. I'm just going to try to attack with multiple bodies at the same time next turn. Um, but I am I am getting buried by Monarch here, and that that's not a surprise. But I'm so close to taking this one back. And I have been for so long. I need my opponent to brick for a turn, but that's much harder when they have the Monarch. Hey Bentley, welcome. Oh, gross. Yeah. So my opponent gets to exile one of my creatures per turn and I am making one creature a turn. Okay. So now please don't have flicker wisp or a counter spell. I guess Source of Plowshares buys them a turn. Shit, man. <laughs> what do you want from me? Alright. Uh, am I comfortable conceding here? No, they're still Toxic Deluge. I'm not comfortable conceding here. There are still more Plague Engineers as well. Franco's being a bully. I'm over here just trying to pox people. They're over there with that stuff. Yep. 
in all fairness, like opponent is doing a really good job of just holding the uh, the monarchy here. Now oh, that's back breaking. We'll see what they name. Like they have a lot of removal options they can name. Or the plowshares is fair. Uh, that's not castable currently. All right, I I think at five life I can uh, I can comfortably throw in the towel. Like my opponent could just bleed us out with a bitter blossom at this point. I'll be keeping this hand. We have Thoughtseize into him to Turok into Lily. I am totally on board with that. Basically, no matter what my opponent is doing. And we're on the play. Yeah, Liliana the Veil felt like a real magic card instead of a card that. Costs the same as Oko, and is just worse than Oko. Um, hmm. Do I just take the exploration here and try to get Clothis with him? I think I can get Clothis with either him or Lily. I'm going to take exploration. Oh man, I've been playing Vintage, and let me tell you, Mentor is a hell of a drug there. Like, it's good in Legacy, but in Vintage, it's just like, hot damn. Alright, we got Clothis and a Mox Diamond that my opponent did not play out. I will take that. get a refresh. I guess I'm only taking a Punishing Fire here, but, like, that can go after my Planeswalker, so I'm good with it. I have, what, 30-something mana sources? 31 mana sources, I think, in my deck remaining to hit for this Lily. Oh, did you really? Okay, that's fine. You can have Exploration. I was just going to lose it if you topped Life from the Loam. That would have been just so good. All right. Awkward stare down, where if my opponent finds Life from the Loam, I am in big trouble. Uh, that's also big trouble. I think I need to get three and four drops into play. I don't think I can play small pox currently. No, oh, we have outs to Clothis, just not main deck. Oh, I'm so screwed. I'm so screwed. Uh... Yeah... I'm dead. I am stone cold dead to that. Yeah, I, I don't get to cast spells. They get to cast spells. They have a draw engine. They have an answer to my planeswalkers. They have half of a combo. Uh, I am straight up comfortable conceding on, on the spot here. Like, <laughs> not, not happening. Do I have Graveyard Hate? Do you have Graveyard Hate? Uh, so I think the way that I'm going to sideward this time is figure out what I don't want, and I don't want removal that does not kill Merit Lodge. 
So that means that I want this stuff out. So at minimum, I want to board five cards. I actually probably also don't want smallpox. My opponent has life from the loam. Uh, that seems really awkward. All right, so let's play surgicals. Let's play bitter blossoms. Let's play revoke existences. Let's play opposition agents. All right, how do I feel about sphere of resistance? Is that is that bad for me? And uh oh god, toxic deluge also not great. Uh. Yikes. I'll keep Toxic Deluge as an a quote unquote out to Field of De the Dead. Alright, let's go Spheres out. Let's just play some creatures that can help end the game. So I'll board these in and I'll play one eliminate in respect of tireless tracker question mark. Duckles, I like where your head is at. Um, I have Graveyard Hate, but I can't actually cast any of my relevant spells. I'm going to ship this one. This hand doesn't look like it has a plan to win. It again has Graveyard Hate, but can't actually cast any of its spells. Yikes. Come on! <laughs> uh, I'll keep five of these, but this is not great. Uh, Plague Engineer, not great. And I don't think I like basic planes. My plan is currently Wasteland the opponent twice and pray they don't have Loam. That's the plan. Okay, um, opponent has a pile of lands. I can wasteland them and buy a very considerable amount of time. M to Turok is pretty good if I rip a black source. Yeah, all right. Buckle up, folks. This is going to be a long, sad game. And I technically should have done this on my opponent's turn in case they play crop rotation as their draw. Strong. When you know five... Or when you know four of the five cards in your opponent's hand and are just, like, max punished for the thing that you're literally saying, that you realize, like, a quarter of a second after, like, too late. Welcome to the life of a streamer. I am your host, Phil. We're pretty dead this game. Like... I'm going to try to get out from under these ports, but it's going to take forever. My opponent is very favored from this position. Like, I took mulligans in the first place. And, like, my deck is set up awkwardly for this matchup. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what streaming is, right? Like, you spend a lot of energy 
talking over lines with people and explaining yourself rather than focusing fully on the game. And so that sort of thing happens all the time. All right, win condition has been acquired. Yes, we, we want to be playing against the, uh, the slow-ish creature decks where we have time to set up and do our thing and let our Planeswalkers take over the game. And this deck is dodging most of the cards that I'm playing. All right. Um, am I activating factory? I guess I'm activating factory. The good news is, if I draw something like a Wasteland, it can now be a colored source. What are you doing over there with that colorless mana? Okay, that makes more sense. Dark Ritual is a reasonable inclusion in any mono-black, or effectively mono-black deck. Alright, am I getting wastelanded? Oh no, my opponent needed red mana? Ah, That was hard to deal with enchantments. Also, like, my opponent's land count is now high enough that, like, we're just in range of Field of the Dead being turned on, and that will spiral the game out of control. Now, like, if I just get to three mana to activate something, like, I, I think I'm buried here. I, I don't think I come back from this position, unfortunately. Like, I can be attacking my opponent for two, but none of these Planeswalkers actually does enough quickly enough that, like, Blast Zone and Field of the Dead can't pressure through. I'm I I don't have the tools to win this matchup easily. I don't think, uh, especially with a mulligan draw. Okay, so what does this look like? I have a turn two play, but it's a turn two play that locks out the potential of me having a turn three play, and I'm really vulnerable to wasteland with this hand. I don't think I like this one. I think I trip over myself too often. I believe I will be keeping this. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the smallpox. I have turn one, fetch, cling to dust my own land. And then just redraw, and then turn to him or sphere, depending on what seems better. I'm just going to play Polluted Delta and pass. It opens me up to Stifle, but like telegraphs that I'm probably a blue deck by playing this. Oh god, are we just <laughs> are we just doing lands again? No, Bayou probably means this is four color loam. All right, scavenging goose is a little awkward against my cling to dust. Since I'm going to be exposed to wasteland anyway, I am just going to grab a scrubland. Castle is totally a fine draw. My opponent getting a creature on board before I can sphere 
it's a little annoying, but like not the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination. All right. Obvious play is obvious. <laughs> I gave them value. All right, my opponent just ate the cling to dust now while they can. Seems valid. My opponent is stuck on mana, so I'm going to cast this sphere, but it means that I can't Kaya next turn. So next turn, I'm just going to be grabbing Yorion from my sideboard. All right, so is this good? I can play this and it pads my life total for a little while. I don't know if this is actually better than playing, grabbing Yorion now. Oh shit, I can exile Mox. Good call. Yeah, that's, that's very clearly the line here. All right. Right now, mentally, part of my head is like figuring out what my work day looks like tomorrow, since I've just learned about this remote day. Garzalaga, thank you very much for your support. Hope you're enjoying the content. Oh, and Console Peasant, I missed you at some point. Thank you for following as well. All right. So I can just like blink this scavenger movies indefinitely for the cost of two life a turn. I am good with that for right now. Then I'll like put a Yorion in play, then I can stop blinking the scavenging ooze and start drawing some cards with Castle Lockwain, maybe. Yeah, so with this Kaya, I can, like, on an empty board, the pattern is minus, minus, and then zero, reset Kaya, minus, minus. The issue right now is the Scavenging Ooze's loyalty. I reset it to two here, so as long as a creature doesn't go to the graveyard this turn, I, I can choose to minus this turn, and that's okay. Thoughtseize Seize isn't particularly good. The two life is a lot here, but I think I'm going to go ahead and cast it.
Um, so if my opponent rips a land, they could attack and then play Punishing Fire and kill my Kaya. But I think I'm okay with that if I'm about to have Yorian. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. There are a lot of draws that end up putting me really far ahead right here. I know they'll just discard the Punishing Fire and rebuy it back. I'm okay with that. Oh god, that's so good. Holy shit. I look like a genius for taking that line now. So it took until round three, but we're now doing the thing. <laughs> Hello and welcome. And that is a very you comment. I hope you're having a great evening. Um, this deck is fun. We're 0-2 right now, but the games have been very interesting. So as far as entertainment value is going, we're doing totally fine on that front. I'm not going to want this Mox Diamond. I'm going to go ahead and plus this Lily first. And we probably take out their Punishing Fire that they can rebuy. Yep, okay, that's as expected. Now, you hit a land. Okay, yeah, you just target creatures. So I will go ahead and target this. That's worth the two life for me. We'll put Yorian into my hand for next turn. And now we have... This very awkward Kaya sinkhole situation set up. Oh, wasteland. If they wasteland me, it keeps me off of Yorian, but like, they haven't cast a spell in a while. I feel like they probably have something to do with that mana. Oh, we just, like, redrew the land like a boss. Alright, so... Let's minus this. Alright, Chalice is gone. Toxic Deluge. I could use Toxic Deluge to keep this Liliana around. And honestly, this play is rude, so I will take it. I will not be plussing my Lily and getting rid of my Yorian, though. That's, that's okay, we can call the turn there. All right, my opponent has thrown in Owl. All right, um, now I have to figure out what I'm doing against this opponent in terms of sideboarding. So they are a Chalice of the Void deck, which means I'd like to trim on one drops a little bit, but my one drops are kind of potent. Flame to Dust is really nice versus Life from the Loam and Punishing Fire, for example. 
um, as well as a lesser extent against Scavenging Ooze, and all of the one-drop removal is good against Bob. And Bob is a hell of a drug. Like, it's not quite Dreadhorde Arcanist in terms of, like, snowball -y power level, but a Bob that untaps a couple of times is really strong. So, what's not good? Again, against these decks that have life from the loam, I don't know that I can really play smallpox. And while Sphere was great this time, I don't think this plan normally works. Um, turn 1 Chalice. I, I have played plenty of pox lists with Blood Guests before. It's always something that you should be thinking about, but... A good question to ask yourself is, how often does a Bloodgast on its own win a game? I think a lot of the days of Legacy are gone, where like a single Bloodgast or um, Nether Shadow just like wins a game 2-2 two, two beats at a time. Cards have gotten powerful. Alright, let's play Revoke Existence for Chalice. Let's play Bitter Blossom because it's Bitter Blossom. And then I need four more cards. Yeah, things like Plague Engineer didn't help those sorts of plans, for sure. I guess it's some of this stuff. Um, I recently played King Narfi's Betrayal in an Enchantress build. It was okay. Not great. Okay. I guess I'm going to play these, just as, like, another body. It's really awkward that they die to Punishing Fire. Like, I think if you're playing with Bloodgast in Legacy, you need to be doing, like, dredge-level shenanigans with that Bloodgast. Like, I can be on board with, like, the, the Hogak and the dredge-style graveyard-based decks, but I think, like, a mono-black deck that is trying to finish the game via Bloodgast is pretty questionable. Oh, I, I don't know what Narfi... Alright, I, I now assume Narfi is a creature. I don't know what that creature does. I, I played King Narfi's Betrayal. I... Uh, uh... And doesn't look good. But this is already a mulligan. This... I think this... I think this hand is going to be too slow, and I'm just going to get run over and die. But that's what game three is for, right? Okay. So the good news is that if my opponent, like, casts a Chalice of the Void here as their, like, big that they kept the hand based on that doesn't actually do anything here god this opposition agent though this opposition agent please do the thing We can now get, like, totally savaged by an Abrupt Decay on Mox Diamond. My opponent didn't play around Opposition Agent while fetching while it was down. That's super good for me. Please fetch. Yes! Yes! They can still, like, Punishing Fire or something and... While it's not, like, blowout, it's real good. 
Hey, if my stifle cantrips here, just saying it'll be better than stifle. Alright, if you had Abrupt Decay and you had the opportunity to fire it off the Mox and didn't, I don't understand. If Abrupt Decay was the draw for turn, that's totally fine. But like, even if you want to play around Opposition Agent, like, getting rid of the Mox Diamond allows you to fetch without issues as well. Silvergill, thank you very much for following. Alright. How good is Kaya in play? Kaya in play is okay with Toxic Deluge as backup. But Thought Seizing away a critical card could be important here. And this is probably the best this Thought Seize will ever be. But I don't think Thought Seize plus attack plus two for two is a good turn. Whereas I do kind of think Planeswalker in play on Empty Board is a good turn. I am just going to say no. Let's take both their lands for Knight of the Reliquary and Loam-based reasons. We're playing against four-color Loam. And our, uh, our best girl here is looking to do some work. She's in the thumbnail for this one. Oof. I mean, I guess, I guess we got some minimal amount of value. And now we can, like, put Yorian in hand while also thought seizing. Yeah, this is, this is not the end of the world. Now opponent fetched around uh, opposition agent. Feels like opponent has a really reactive hand. Oh, Uro. Uh, okay. That explains why they valued that so highly. I will take Knight of the Reliquary. Now... I will put this bird serpent into my hand. So, um, I have opinions about Uro in Four Color Loam. I know Connor Fulse, aka Loamer Boy, was of the opinion that Four Color Loam was probably going to be one of the best Uro decks in the format, but I really disagree with that. I don't think Four Color Loam is very good at all at fueling their graveyard. Current cycle is really awkward. So, my opponent has this Dryad Arbor that I can kill, and I can kill a lot of different ways. But if I kill it, I give them the card that they need to fuel Uro. I will probably end up kicked Blood Chief's Thirst to kill that when it comes back. So, I guess I'm just going to dump this in play. Okay, so specifically, let's let's work with Life from the Loam, right? So with Life from the Loam, you want land cards in your graveyard so that you can get card advantage out of them. And if you're, you know, using Uro's Escape to take those cards out of the graveyard, you're detracting from the power of one of your other cards that's often very critical to your success in Legacy. In addition, like, Four Color Loam puts maybe on average 1.25 cards into the graveyard per turn cycle or something like that, it's very slow at fueling the graveyard. Whereas, like, blue cantrip decks, they can, they can burn through that stuff pretty quickly.
Then there's also the issue of needing double blue. The double green is usually not hard for these four color mana bases, but double blue is an ask. Uh, maybe I should have attacked with the Mishra's Factory, too. Because, like, this puts the fifth card into the graveyard for their Uro. But I have to get rid of that. I'll leave them with that Dryad Arbor. And just call it a turn. I should have attacked with the Mishra's Factory. And, like, Uro also detracts from the size of your Knight of the Reliquaries, too. Oh, I'm going to need to always yield to this, too. All right. So I probably want to keep my Yorian around. Pick this. Target that arrow and send it to the Shadow Realm. So now we'll see how many turns it takes for them to be able to play this arrow again. And this is where we're probably going to see the big difference between arrow in a traditional blue deck and arrow in this shell. Because late game, a blue deck can go like brainstorm into ponder into brainstorm into preordain or something like that, and like fuel another Uro in two turns very frequently between cantrips and fetches, and we're just not going to see that here. Also, strong. Uh, so it's creature. I have one, two, three, four, five. Escape five. So I can cast this again to gain more life off Night of the Reliquary. I don't know that I need to do that now. I think I'm going to ignore my life total a little bit and take a card this way this turn. Nice. Yeah, honestly, Jones, there's there's no, like, magic style guide that everyone hands out. Like, good luck on trying to get magic players to do anything stylistically similarly. While I think Kaya is cool, I think it's time to just win the game.
I mean, Four Color Loam has Planeswalkers, it has Bobs, it, it has a decent amount of card advantage. Um, I have Deterministic Lethal on board. Four in the air, plus two on the ground. No, I'm not going to kill them with a card that I don't think I've showed them yet. Nice. Alright, um, I'm on the play. I have no lands. Ship it. Ooh. We are really feeling the variance of the 80 card deck tonight. Yeah, I've gone to Gen Con, uh, I think twice. Gen Con's awesome. Uh... <laughs> uh... Do I keep this? Do I keep this five card hand that doesn't really do anything and can't cast his him to Turok? Yeah, that's that's why we're we're allowed to play with the bird serpent. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what this hand beats. Whereas, like, I can see worlds where this hand wins. You go back. Beat four of these. You go back. You go back. Why are we playing Yorion? Uh, uh, reasons? I think it's reasons, yeah. Reasons sound correct. Yeah, all right, so him to, him to Turok into a Planeswalker is a real deck plan. Ugh. Kick in the teeth? Our opponent is probably playing, like, a blue-green X snow deck. It could be Delver, but, like, this basic makes me think no. Let's jam since I can't wasteland this turn. I could also just put Yorian in my hand and then play this Lily around a days later. But I need this card to tick up approximately a billion times before we can go to zombie land. And so the earlier I try to resolve it, the better. I don't think I get to play hyper conservatively on a mulligan to four. One of the issues here also is that my opponent can just, like, play an Abrupt Decay if they're a bug deck, and then this is gone. Reordain. Control deck or combo deck? Those look like control deck lands. But it is a touch hard to tell. Yeah, that's that's the thing that's in the back of my mind is like, is this a blue green Omnitel list that is running spell pierce in the flex slots? About to get high tided. That would be hot. I wouldn't even be mad.
Like, if people can bring out their pet decks again, that is something that makes me happy. Omni? Go and tell. I think I'm going to give him the bird serpent. What do you say? Alright, so Cunning Wish can get any number of things that kills me here. Maybe Shared Summons. Shared Summons. Um, this doesn't technically kill me, but they're going to have a Emrakul. Like, I can get rid of the Grizzlebrand, and then, like, Emrakul just annihilates me. So I am, I am comfortable throwing in the towel there. Alright, what do I like? Revoke Existence probably doesn't do what I want it to do. I like Thorns. I like Opposition Agents. I like Surgical Extractions for Show and Tell after I discard one. I don't like... There's going to be a pile of them. don't really like those. I think I'm going to end up playing Bitter Blossoms and Plague Engineers. <clears throat> um, do I need to be thinking about Planeswalkers anymore? Lord Mekhail, uh, think about things like Clothis that are indestructible. All right. If my opponent's just blue-green, Oko's gone, I probably don't need to be thinking about that anymore. Get all these out of here first. Can I board in four more? Yes. I can board in Bitter Blossoms and Plague Engineers. And that actually means I can trim one of these Cling to Dusts. Liliana's Triumph occasionally gets me out of a weird spot. Is that worth keeping? I don't think that's really worth keeping. Like, a situational one-of in an 80-card deck is not a good place to be. Yeah. This hand has a plan. Doesn't Enter the Infinite just draw the cards? I don't think that's a search. Alright, is there anything spicy in here I need to be concerned with? Not really. I guess I should, like, be good and take a snip of this. Not that I'm really probably going to need it, but, you know, good, good habits. Yep, all we need to do is beat one Grizzle Boy. <sighs> How hard could it be to beat a Grizzle Brand? Um, release the Ants is old tech, but release the Ants is also something that could beat me. I'm going to go ahead and play this. All right, Force Pitching Spell Pierce, so I now know all of their cards again. Veil of Summer is something that's going to be annoying. We can play around it a bit because we know about it. Let's 
put our win condition into play. Right, yeah, Emrakul on top of their library is their best possible thing. But if they can find a Grizzlebrand, that's still more expensive than everything in my deck, right? So they can still assemble a kill if they have released the ants and make it deterministic. Uh, we won't thought seize into Veil of Summer. I guess I know about that. Demon. Demon. Notably, the Mystic Sanctuary is pretty far away from being turned on, right? My opponent has a basic snow-covered forest in play. By the way, I am not a huge fan of this faded-out coloring. I don't think it's aesthetically appealing. I feel like this is less vivid in terms of symbols than most other lands. Really? There's one Grizzlebrand, so do they just find Omni? That's fine. Like, your stuff can be free. Alright, so Cunning Wish can get Shared Summons, which can get Grizzlebrand. We can maybe beat Grizzlebrand. Maybe. The Veil of Summer makes things hard. Will you blow Veil of Summer here? Maybe I can get them to blow Veil of Summer here. And then that opens the way for me to actually answer Grizzlebrand in a future turn. Yeah, Thoughtseize, you did your job there. Thank you for that. <clears throat> actually, how do I feel about Yorian? So I plus on Grizzlebrand, it gets minus two. That brings it to four power. That means Liliana lives. Yeah, maybe we can engineer this scenario here. Oh no! Oh no! My sequencing! For this plan, I totally should have plus this Lily first. Yet. So that means I should just mill with this. Oh, I milled a cling to dust. That's actually pretty good. Not great. But, like, it's a, it's a card that has text. Yeah, I cut Source of Plowshares, and I cut that Situational Edict. And I think I cut the Smallpox, too. So, like, Liliana of the Veil answers this Grizzlebrand. 
The issue this turn is that my opponent can use all their cantrips to just get into something that can protect it, whether it's a, like, force of will or, uh... Ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh... Veil of Summer. Backup omniscience just in case. Like, opponent has nine cards. Oh, do we still have smallpox? Yeah, we do still have smallpox. I also can't cast my Yorion currently. Just, uh, just some redundancy, just in case. You know, the black deck's real good at answering enchantments. Surely they've got multiple pieces of counter magic by now, right? Alright, uh, if this draws an answer to the duder, I'll stay in the game. Otherwise, I think I just concede here. Uh, we're not really coming back from this position if they get, like, a whole nother turn of, of cantripping. I just don't think there's any way that's going to happen. Alright, final round. Seeing if we can get some play points. This hand can him to Turok on turn one. I think that means it's a keep. But, oh shit, it can't him to Turok on turn one. That's a Mox Diamond, not a Chrome Mox. Uh, this was not a keep. Yet. Alright, well. <laughs> Oops. That's where we're at. <laughs> Maybe they're playing Reanimator. Maybe Steel Stompy? Maybe a Pox Smear? Oh yeah, I'm 100% cracking that to draw. If I get a land, I'm like totally out of this situation that I put myself in. Yeah. Mm, actually, maybe I should have Mox Diamond there. I'm not sure, like, which has higher value. <laughs> Put a blood ghast into their yard? Alright, so you remember, like, half an hour ago where I was, like, shitting on blood ghast as a win condition? We might lose to a blood ghast this game. Muldro <laughs> Muldrotha, yes, I am extremely happy with the um, ban changes across the board. Very happy with Legacy, very happy with Vintage. And... I'm not in touch enough with the other formats to know how good they are there, but I assume people are happy. All right, yeah, we're, buckle up. It's a pox mirror. I think that means overall, big picture, we're probably favored. Because, like, we have Yorian for endgame scenarios. But my opponent probably takes down this game. <clears throat> like, I'm, I'm just behind on board in three different scenarios. My opponent has a man land and a creature on board that's recursive. And a Planeswalker, and I also can't cast spells. Um, I'm going to go ahead and concede. That, that sinkhole was very good, and I don't want to show them more of my deck than I have to. Alright. 
So, how do I want to play the Pox Mirror? A lot of cards are going to be awkward. The Planeswalker removal stuff is going to be really good. The Cling to Dusts are going to be really good. I maybe don't want to be playing Smallpox. I think that's a very awkward game. I might want Sphere on the play, but not on the draw. So I like I know I'm going to do that. And then I want a lot more threats if possible. I don't think I want the Deluge. I 100% want Bitter Blossoms. Actually, maybe I pull my Spheres too. And then I play like Opposition Agents and Plague Engineers. And I would need three more cards. I guess I can play Revoke Existence for things like Curse Scroll and Pithing Needle that my opponent might have. that better than just a couple of surgicals for blood guests and other spirits? Maybe not. Yeah, let's play a couple of these. Then I can get blood guests out of there and not have to worry about those poking my planeswalkers. And then if we make it to a game three scenario, we can think about the revoke existence. All right, how do I feel about keeping a hand on the strength of a turn two opposition agent? Not great. This also like goes down one card for Mox Diamond. I think I'm gonna ship this. All right, I will keep this. I think I'm just gonna try to hit my opponent with him into him. That, that would mean I throw back the Lily, but Yorian can be my win condition. I think I'm good with that. <clears throat> my opponent also mulliganed. Oh, wow, we got two lands there. That's probably very good. Nice. All right, we got there him and a Lily of the Veil. Oh, good God. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. <laughs> so my opponent has kept smallpox in. Whereas I just boarded in a bunch of like derpy creatures to have threats. Because I think pressuring opposing planeswalkers is pretty darn important. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, I don't think I need to crack my fetch land yet for any reason. So this will take over this game. It will take a while. But this is great. Another thing I can do is put my Yorian into hand. <laughs> Lol. I can put my Yorian into hand at some point, and if it gets discarded, it's not that big of a deal. We're going to start by taking out the opponent's lands in case they have Crucible.
Uh, I have a good thing going on here. My opponent has cards, but they're probably either creature removal or three drops. They're probably creature removal. Could be discard as well. All right, opponent scoops it up there. All right, um, I did not see anything there that makes me want to have Revoke Existence. I think I am good with my sideboarding as is. I certainly don't want to be, like, bringing in the Spheres and Thorns on the draw if I didn't want them on the play. I like this hand. We're a little bit slow. And if I get sinkhold on turn one, it's a little awkward. I guess I can play Polluted Delta and pass. My opponent has like Dark Ritual Opposition Agent. That's awkward. But I think I want to protect myself from sinkhole and then try to get some tempo back by like him to Turoking and try to put myself in the driver's seat. Oh wow, no him to Turok on their end. Alright, let's see if we get opposition agented. We did not. Tomb Stalker. Impressive. I don't think that's worth surgicaling. Oh no, what did my opponent keep? I don't want to be playing Plague Engineers right now, I don't think. I think this is Blindswalker time. My opponent could have, like, Eliminates. I'm going to discard this. I'm going to keep my surgical in case they have blood gas right here. Innocent blood. Okay, that's fine. No, they had a turn where they had three mana, right? Didn't they have that Urborg in play at some point? Alright, yeah, Pithing Needle's good. So that shuts off both of our lilies. The Urborg was hinned. Okay, yeah, so they, they still could have three mana walkers, I guess. My bad. <clears throat> I think I'm fine with fetching now. I could, like, a Surgical Innocent Blood, but I don't think that's worth a card. Like, I have very specific things that I would want to Surgical. In retrospect, I don't know why I fetched. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, are you going to ghost quarter this?
You're not going to go square to that. <clears throat> I named Vampire for Bloodgast. Um, do I want to just draw a card with Castle Lockedwain before it gets Ghost Quartered? Or do I just want to play another Plague Engineer? I think my opponent needs that land. This assembly worker. Yeah, opponent might be ahead on cards, but they're behind six power on board. Yeah, so in this matchup, I think Vampire, Assembly, Worker... And, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, either Fairy or Rogue are reasonable. Oh, my opponent junked their Ghost Quarter, leaving me with Castle Lockwain and Mishra's Factory? Word? All right, not the best draw. So now my opponent is hellbent when I have a card advantage engine and a companion and an onboard 2 2. Nice. I'm going to play around Opposition Agent and just fetch now. I should end up giving me some life at some point this game. Yeah, Muldrotha, that was, a, that was a lesson we learned, like, when all the companions were legal, right? Like, if you have a companion and your opponent doesn't and you're doing similar things, like, you end up pulling very ahead. Also, like, why is my opponent letting me keep this card? They've had... They've had opportunities to get rid of it. I don't understand them going over the thing that gets them dead when they have so many removal spells, when they could be going after one of the things that gives me card advantage instead. Alright, well, I have a Surgical for that Bloodgast 
once I can answer it. Yorian's blink is end of turn. Yorian's blink is beginning of the next end step. So I can use that to reset Kaya's loyalty. Kind of awkward. Do I want the Bloodgast to not be able to attack next turn in case they can remove my Yorian? Actually, I can just protect Kaya by zeroing on Kaya. That's slightly safer than Yorian. Again, I think I'm good with playing around opposition agent from my opponent. Welcome back, Kaya. Claim to dust. Guess I can cycle that for a card after I see what's going on here. I'm drawing so many more cards than my opponent. Oh, nice. Actually pretty happy to see that. What don't I want them to have back? They somehow get things back. Ghost Quarter? Guess goes quarter. Another cling to dust. All right, storm is one. Storm is two. Uh, I'm fine with playing Urborg. I've activated this. Am I just sitting back on Yorian? Um... Well, I, I can, like, hold the blood gas from attacking Kaya, is the thing. Without, like, having to use Opposition Agent. Yeah, I don't think I need to attack. Lily, Lily of the Veil. Yeah, we're just, uh, we're just taking our sweet time with the Pox Mirror. No. No hurries. Just uh, playing some good, honest magic.
Uh, Mox Diamond is like a playable card. I don't know that I need to play it. All right, do I care about Kaya anymore? I don't know that I care about Kaya anymore. But I also don't know that I don't care about Kaya, you know? I could still just, like, cling to dust again next turn. Ah, uh, Let's take it slow. I, I have all the tools in the world. One reason to keep the Kaya around is, like, even though I have cards, I don't really have anything that does anything in hand. Like, I can stop a Mishra's factory or whatever, but that's about it. Yes. Opposition agent. Opposition agent can go. Now we're going to set a stop on my opponent's draw step. And I'll surgical blood gas on their draw step. Actually, I could consider flickering Yorion, but I guess it's just worse, right? But yeah, that's really awkward with the timing. I guess I can cling to dust here. Um, just remove some card. One, two, three, four, five. Done. A stars to plowshares. Nice, nice safety net. Be surgical, the blood ghasts. And my opponent has conceded from the game on that note. I, it, it felt like I was ahead, yeah. I'm not sure if it was the planeswalker, or the cling to dust, or the cling to dust, or the cling to dust, or the castle locked wing that my opponent didn't destroy on like three separate occasions. Um, but we felt ahead. I wonder what things felt like from my opponent's perspective. Like, maybe they were just afraid of dying quickly. But, like, Castle Lockwain was, like, the land that I valued the most by a very considerable margin. Because, like, drawing one or two cards off of that really lets me break parity. Yeah, the, the companion that was a 4-5 that walled their threat, protected my planeswalkers, and let me do my thing. Yeah, like, there, there were a bunch of things that put us ahead there. All right, uh... What's the overall version on this? Not version, verdict. Um, more of a thumbs up than Black Red Pox for sure, but this one doesn't quite have the full fill stamp of approval yet. You lose out a lot on playing this like Disco Pox deck list. You're not a Dark Ritual deck anymore, so you don't have the possibility of like turn one him to Turok and Thoughtseize. Or like turn one him to Turok and to turn two him to Turok quite as frequently. You gain some of that back via Mox Diamond. But I feel like this deck doesn't have good opening hands most of the time. The some of the other like mono black dark ritual decks, like you have a dark ritual, you have an absurd busted start, and you have a good follow-up play, and like 
that's that's a real way of winning a game. But I felt like with this deck, Plot Seize is my only good turn one play unless I have a Mox Diamond. And then on turn two, him to Turok and Sphere of Resistance are really only my turn two plays. A lot of times I felt like I couldn't cast Smallpox in this deck. Like, I know we have 33 lands and 4 Mox Diamonds, but with the amount that I was mulliganing, I was terrified to cast a Smallpox. And I boarded them out a lot of the time for that reason. So, I don't know. Like, it's it's a brand new metagame world. Like, there's, there's new, you know, bans, and there's still plenty of room for people who want to play these sorts of strategies to tinker with stuff. The white cards here in this, like, small splash ratio seemed to work. And that's not always the case with these black box lists. All right, I, I think that's all I have to say about this one. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this, despite the fact that uh, we didn't put up the best record tonight. For those of you who ended up watching this on YouTube, if you made it this far, you know, please throw me a like, a comment, maybe a subscription if you're not subscribed to the channel already and you're loving Legacy. And if you're really enjoying my content, please consider donating to the channel in some way to support my content. See ya!